What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so this is the situation we have right here. What we're looking at right now is Invest 98L. So this is what we're looking at right now, guys. And if we take a look at the NHC, we, this is Fiona. This is Tropical Depression 8 that was recently designated. This is the area of interest we are paying attention to because A, this has a chance of impacting land. And B, we've seen several models, uh, in fact, several model runs of those models too, of this thing strengthening uh, potentially into a major hurricane the next week or so. So let's go ahead and read this. Just keep in mind, they updated this just before I started recording this. So let's go ahead and read this out to you guys. Satellite data indicate that the tropical wave located several hundred miles east of the Windward Islands has become better organized this morning. Additional development is expected and the tropical depression is, quote, likely to form within the next few days as the system moves westward to west-northwestward at 15 to 20 miles per hour across the eastern and central Caribbean Sea. Interests in the Windward Islands should closely monitor the progress of the system as heavy rainfall and gusty winds could impact the islands. Formation chance in the next 48 hours is medium at 40%. Where it was this morning was 10%. That's how much of a spike this uh, this they updated this to be. Chance in the next five days, 70%. Where was it this morning? 50%. So yeah, they have really spiked the chances of this because they've looked at data, satellite data and they decided to put an update out for everyone. So with that being said, what's fueling this thing? Let's take a look at the wind shear. To the east of it, there is some shear going on with it, but to the west of it, and where it's going, it's pretty much open season. That's why it's developing at the rate it is right now. So, yeah, there's going to be pretty low wind shear throughout much of the Caribbean and uh, and its current path right now. So, this thing develops into a tropical depression, tropical storm. It's going to do it easily. So, that's what we're looking at right now. The global sea temperatures. 29 plus degree uh, Celsius water right there. That's 84 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, there is a little bit less due to Hurricane Fiona over here, but yeah, this is what we're looking at. It This is open season for this thing, and no wonder it's developing so quickly because quite on, quite honestly, the conditions are pretty ripe for development right now in this part of it. Now, let's, with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at some intensity models. We don't have the track models. In fact, we'll show you some of those track models as the, both the European and GFS are doubling, uh, doubling down on their scenarios. The intensity models, after this develops, it develops into a tropical storm, and then we have this strengthening into a hurricane in the next three days, and then potentially a major hurricane by the in the next five to six days, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll have to wait and see with more when more models come out with this, but that's something we'll have to pay attention to, especially with this next thing right here. But before we do, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Its maximum winds are at 30 knots or 35 miles per hour. The pressure is 10, 10 millibars, and the radius of maximum winds is 90 nautical miles right there. So. Yeah, pretty robust circulation right now. So let's go ahead and run this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run the last four runs of the GFS uh, model, and we're gonna run both the tw uh, the twelve Z and zero Z of the European uh, model uh, from uh, the last time as well. So we're gonna go ahead and run all of these very quickly just to show you what we're talking about. The run for the GFS actually has this thing developing much uh, really quickly, and quite honestly, up to this point, I do kind of believe the GFS considering how much the NHC has kind of spiked the chances as well as its development. So yeah, this thing develops, uh, makes landfall in the Windward Islands as a tropical storm, moves through that, kind of organizes, develops, takes its time doing that, and then it becomes a hurricane. And then this happens. This rapidly intensifies all the way down to a major hurricane. And look at this. This run has it running towards the Yucatan Peninsula as a 920 millibar hurricane. Now, I'll ha now the 850 millibar wi uh, winds, I'll have to sample those a little bit later. Uh, in fact, I've tried sampling those and, uh, and everything like that, and they don't really give a good idea. But 920 millibars, that is a high-end Category 4 or Category 5 hurricane, ladies and gentlemen. Now, am I saying this scenario is going to play out? Absolutely not. That run is just one model run uh, right here, but I'm just showing you what they're what they're saying right here. And this thing makes landfall, kind of loses a lot of structure over the Yucatan Peninsula, re-enters the Gulf of Mexico, starts strengthening again, then it kind of slows down and stalls, which at this point, I don't believe this is going to happen. I don't trust the GFS after like five days when it comes to this, but I'm just showing you guys what they're looking at. And then 
This makes landfall on the Texas-Louisiana border and moves up from there. Now, the, eight, the 18Z, we're going to have to show you that. And that anything after that, that's basically what the GFS is somewhat doubling down on. The 18Z has this thing qu quickly organizing and making landfall as a strong tropical storm. And then it organizes, develops, strengthens into a hurricane, rapidly intensifies, moves very close to Jamaica. Then it makes landfall in Cuba as a 946 millibar storm, which that's either a high-end cat, uh, that's likely a high-end cat 3 or a low-end cat 4 for you guys right there. And then this enters the Gulf, re-strengthens again to a 935 millibar system, which that's a category, that's cat four strength right, th uh, right there already. Then it approaches the Florida Panhandle, makes landfall as a major hurricane, and then kind of moves up, uh, moves up the United States right there. The Zero Z kind of doubles down on this too a little bit. So this thing continues to organize and develop as it, as it near Trinidad and Tobago at this point. Then it kind of organizes, continues developing, strengthens into a hurricane, approaches Jamaica again, makes landfall in Cuba around the same area, this time as a 932 millibar hurricane. Uh, which is likely category four strength right there, enters the Gulf of Mexico, kind of stagnates and slowly weakens as it approaches the Alabama-Florida border right there. So, yeah, that's a pretty interesting development we're looking at right here. All these runs, mind you, have this thing making landfall as a major hurricane, and so does the European model run too, uh, too and I'll show you that in a little bit. But if we take a look at this, this organizes, develops, this actually has it making landfall near Trinidad and Tobago as a hurricane, which honestly is a little bit outlandish considering uh, everything going on. But I am taking it with a grain of salt because of how quickly this thing is organizing as 98L. So yeah, this strengthens into a hurricane, then it rapidly intensifies as it approaches Jamaica once again, makes landfall a little bit east, or, uh, a little bit to the east this time in Cuba, as a 947 millibar system. That's likely a high end category three right there. And then it approaches the Florida Keys, either makes a landfall or a close brush to that, and then makes landfall actually close, a little bit north of the Tampa area, and then moves at, uh, moves into the United States right there. So that's what we're looking at right there with the 6Z. The 12Z is starting to come out. We'll have to take a look at that later. The European model run kind of is showing the s similar stuff right here. Let's go ahead and pull up the 12Z and then the 0Z because those are the longest uh, ranging models right there. The 12Z from uh, the 12Z from yesterday had this going on. Kind of takes its time developing as before it enters the Caribbean. Then that's when it starts developing after about 5 days according to the European. But considering what the NHC where the NHC has this developing now, I'm inclined to believe that this thing's probably going to be developing I'd say in the next 72 hours, but anyway, I'm showing you this run right here. This thing organized, develops, strengthens into a hurricane, makes landfall of the western tip of Cuba, doesn't really do that much to it, and then it enters the Gulf and starts intensifying, and from there, that's 10 days out, and we don't really know where it's going to make landfall from there, according to the European right there. Then the Zero Z comes out, and this is what we're looking at too. Kind of the similar, similar stuff right here, waits about... I would say four days or so before, four to five days before developing. But once again, because the NHC has, is noticing this thing is organizing qu uh, pretty quickly, if we take a look at this, this now has a 70% chance development. And if we take a look at the system by itself, it does look mo uh, more organized and it's moving through a conducive environment right now. But with that all aside, this thing continues to organize, develop, and then strength and strengthen as it actually moves through the strait between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba. And then it approaches the, uh, the, Gulf of Mexico approaches the Gulf Coast right there and from there we are not entirely sure what's going to happen from there but yeah I wanted to make this video talking about this because this system is organizing right now just about a few hundred miles off the coast of the Windward Islands right there so yeah and considering how consistent these model runs have been I need to make this video because we could potentially see a U.S. landfall from this. Now, don't quote me on this because this is like this is several like a week and a half out. So please don't quote me on that. I am just relaying to you what these models are relaying to me. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Helps me out. Helps me make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day. Stay safe.